Hi everyone, this is Sasha and Jesse from Mountain Pass Performance. We're super excited because today, Rivian and Tesla are announcing supercharging for these awesome vehicles. We've already had our Rivian as a tow vehicle, uh, hauling our Tesla swapped Lotus Evora to the Canadian International Auto Show. And while this truck tows amazingly, it's pretty clear that we need reliable charging. And we've had uh, our share of trouble already trying to use uh, regular level three chargers. Um, they're just super unreliable. Um, there's usually not many stalls. Jesse can speak to that. He's got a, a Hyundai Ionic here that's... Uh, well. I've had to talk my wife off the cliff a few times after stopping at five different chargers and they're all broken or occupied, so... Yeah, I mean, hopefully. whoever authorized this should just be... <laughs> On that note, let's go. All right. See if this works. Fingers crossed. Show you guys how the process works and hopefully it's as smooth and, and easy as it is on a Tesla. And we are currently navigating to the supercharger which tells the Rivian software to preheat the battery. And it's important to preheat the battery because uh, a warmer or hot battery has less internal resistance. So this just means the battery will be able to absorb more current with, with a smaller increase in voltage. So the, the charger is able to put in um, right up to the battery's threshold voltage, more current and charge at a higher power. And it's also important because a colder battery will degrade or, or kind of get some internal damage at a faster rate if it's being charged really quickly when cold. Um, so we have navigating the supercharger, and with this quad motor vehicle, we can see the stator temperatures getting really hot um, because the way that the car heats the battery is by running the motors in a really inefficient mode and then circulating the coolant through the stators of the motor that heats the coolant and then that coolant is directed into the battery. So, and you noticed something interesting. Yeah, we switched it to uh, conserve mode, just as a little experiment, and right away the rear motor temperatures started dropping. They've dropped about 60 degrees since we did that. So if you are preconditioning for a supercharger and you need your battery to be as hot as possible, we would definitely suggest not being in conserve mode so it uses all four motors to preheat the battery instead of just two right now. Yeah, that's because the rear motors aren't spinning right now. So if the rear motors were to be, you know, heated with current flowing through them, um, Rivian would need to come up with some advanced algorithms for that because with a motor not moving, you're just going to be running current through the same windings over and over again. And we can't just plug in and charge as we were hoping. Uh, maybe that's the case in the States, or maybe that's the case with V4 superchargers. But here in Canada, as of today, we had to either use the Rivian app or the Tesla app, select our stall, and then the charging worked. And it started up charging. So we only charged for about five seconds before shutting it off. We're gonna now walk through the process with some uh, footage for you guys. And, um, see the charge rates. Uh, we're at 23 degrees Celsius, which is something in Fahrenheit, um, but that's about what the battery preconditions to. So that's a, a fair charging uh, temperature start point, and the state of charge is 26. So a little bit high, but we'll give you an idea of the power you'll expect at a few different levels with a V3 charger. All right, let's do it, Jess. Okay, so you make sure that the uh, it's not hiding that adapter is needed, you have network, Tesla selected, 150 kilowatts. Select 1B, start charger. Put this in, and you've got to lock it. Make sure that the lock is fully down. And then it should work just like any other CCS charger. Well, we're super happy with, you know, these reliable Tesla chargers now working with this truck. It's been holding over 200 kilowatts um, up until about 45 percent 
and it's just tapering at whatever the truck is demanding. The, we went on a long road trip with this truck, and of the five chargers we tested, um, I think it, it was disgraceful, actually. It was, um, yeah, whoever made those government contracts with no accountability, and whoever lets these chargers not function, um, did a massive disservice to the entire adoption of EVs. Um, so anyway, not to go on that tangent too much, but uh, yeah, the Petro one was super slow, it was like 60 kilowatts, IV, wouldn't even start charging. Didn't start. Um, Electrify Canada did work, but it was it would give you a bit, but then it was quite slow. Yeah, it tapered quickly. They all advertised 350 kilowatts, but you can tell when it's the charger limiting versus the vehicle, because the vehicle generally tapers gradually, and a charger will will generally have a hard cutoff, a, hard, a big drop when it starts overheating. So yeah, I couldn't be more thrilled with how this Tesla charger is working. The experience is already a million times better than most of these big companies these charging companies, and I'm sure we'll only get more seamless uh, once you can just plug in and, and not even have to open an app. So, way to go Tesla. I mean, I'm sure they're giving away a lot of their competitive advantage by opening that up, but it's for sure the right thing to do, and it's much appreciated um, by, you know, for, for us having a truck that we can tow our race cars to different racetracks and have reliable charging and not get stranded. Yeah. The only thing worse than no charging is bad charging put that on a shirt and send it to like all these executives <laughs> that don't even drive electric cars <laughs> they don't even know how these chargers work no all of you should be fired oh, okay <laughs>